Hello everyone. So this is one of the cards I mentioned in my review video of the Artist Loft watercolors, which if you haven't watched already, I will link to it um, here in the video. But yeah, I had got um, the watercolors in this watercolor cardstock um, at Michael's not too long ago and had posted a picture of it on Instagram and all that kind of stuff. And then now that I'm on this massive watercolor kick and just kind of went crazy for a couple days, <laughs> um, I thought I would do a card with the same Stamping Bella flower garden image that just I've had out on my desk and I've just kind of turned this into a mini series. So um, I cut down the watercolor paper to four and a quarter by five and a half inches and then you saw me use my little EK Success powder tool. Um, any of those little like powder bags would work as well. I'm just trying to remove as much static from the cardstock as possible. And I have the smooth side facing me. And then I've inked up the stamp with my Versamark, which is a clear sticky ink. And I'm stamping that on the center of this piece of watercolor paper. And then I'm going to cover it with black embossing powder. Now I do not work with black embossing powder too often. Usually I'll use it for a sentiment and on vellum and that sort of thing. Just because embossing black on any lighter color like watercolor paper or white cardstock is such a mess. Um, I rarely do it. But I prefer the look of that than stamping in a black pigment ink and embossing with clear. So what I'm doing here is just taking a fluffy brush and just kind of brushing off any you know stray black powder. You can't really see it on camera but I could see it in real life. So I'm just trying to brush it off without touching the image before I heat emboss it so I don't have any stray bits of powder in that. I don't mind a couple but I don't want a ton. And then I heat it from the front and the back to try and prevent as much warping as possible. It takes a little while, I edited that out, but it takes a little while with um, watercolor cardstock because it's so thick to completely melt all the embossing powder. And then I always make sure to funnel the black embossing powder back into the container, put the lid on really tightly and put it away because otherwise I will knock it over with my elbow and black embossing powder is one of the worst things to try and clean up. Any other, like I will take glitter over black embossing powder. So, and I have knocked it over before and it just gets everywhere. So once that's done, I'm going to tape this to my little cutting board, which I've shown in several videos lately since I've been watercoloring so much. And I'm actually using the exact same tape I used on the previous video, which was I think used on the one before. So I'm getting quite a few uses out of this tape because I'm just, like I said, I kind of did a ton of cards in one day um, and was filming all of it. Just This was all just me experimenting and then with each piece I would just finish the card. So once I've got it taped down really, really well, I'm grabbing these Artist Loft watercolors, which, like I said, I did the review on, and I am just dampening the petals, just like all the other um, images I did, um, starting with the flower first. So dampening it with clear water and then just picking up the color directly from the little watercolor cakes and applying it. Um, you could get fancy if you want and do like one petal at a time and get some really neat little effects and then e let each petal dry and it would look really cool and then each petal would be sort of different which would be more realistic but one I am impatient I do these videos for free and for fun <laughs> so I one don't have the time and two I just don't have the patience I need to eventually you know put a little more effort into it but at this point I was just playing so really random um, just using some of the light pinks and some of the purples and really having fun with it um, I did notice like these watercolors they're kind of chalky and I had said in the review, they're not super pigmented, but what do you expect for, you know, a few dollars? So they're definitely worth it though for just playing around with. I like the colors and I like them. I just, and I don't have high expectations for them. Like you're not going to get really high end quality of pigment and everything else with watercolors that are so few dollars. So I still like them though. They're fun to play with. And yeah, um, with the black embossing, it kind of helps to keep things a little more contained. Um, the one thing though I did notice with these, because of the little bit of chalkiness, it kind of would dull the embossing. So after it was dry, I would just take the damp, clean watercolor brush and just go over the lines. You can see me doing it right here. So just to kind of clean up some of the little lines there and then it was fine. So I just kind of keep going back and forth and doing that. And then once I get, um, the whole main image is colored here and they're completely dry. I'm going to start um, really watering down. I chose three different colors, a yellow, a green, and a purple. And I'm just adding a whole bunch of clean water, like really loading my brush. And then I'm transferring it over into this little, the little lid as a palette here. So I've got the three colors, got them really good and watered down. 
and then I'm going to completely saturate um, the background of this piece of cardstock and I'll show in a second I get it completely the whole background this time usually I work in sections but I'm trying to get it so that I can do the whole thing at once one so it blends better and two just for again for speed but you can see here I got it really good and saturated and then I'm just picking up the color and dropping it into place so if you're not super comfortable with mixing colors and that sort of thing I would avoid adding the purple purple can get really muddy when you're mixing it with you know yellow and green so either leave it out completely or you can use a blue because if blue mixes with yellow it turns green if it mixes with the green it turns kind of an aqua color but with purple you got to be careful otherwise you end up with a muddy mess but I really wanted the purple just to kind of play off those flowers there and I was just really careful about not really mixing it just moving it a little bit and then leaving it alone so I just go back and forth letting the colors kind of blend themselves and then dry it all with my heat tool because again I'm impatient. So once I get it completely dry um, you could leave it to sit you know for a few hours or whatever but like I said I don't have time for that. So dry it with my heat tool. Once that's done I can peel off the tape which is always the funnest part. <laughs> so gently peel off that tape so you don't tear the cardstock and this time I think I finally actually threw it out because I just got it coated in watercolor and it's just a curled up mess, but I got a lot of uses out of it. So once I'm done with that, I'm going to trim it down just a little bit um, because I want to use it on a standard A2 size card, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. So I've trimmed it down a bit and then I'm going to mat it on a piece of black cardstock. So I was always using my ATG adhesive and using a fair bit because one, watercolor cardstock is a little bit heavier and two just to prevent any little bit of warping that might still be there even though taping it down really helps prevent that. So once I'm done that I'm going to go on to my card base which is some um, my favorite things banana split cardstock. The yellow kind of went quite well with the yellow from the watercolor. And then I grabbed a piece of MFT limeade cardstock which also went really well with the green. And I just had a little strip of it here and I've got another sentiment from my um, Great Greetings set, which again I've been using, well, with all these cards lately. <laughs> but yeah, there's so many different sentiments in the set. I've made, you know, a different card for so many different occasions, so yay me. Um, using my stamp positioner and my Hero Arts black ink, I'm just inking it up and stamping it into place and it just fit perfectly. So again, yay me. <laughs> So once I'm done with that, I'm going to see how it kind of fits there on my image. And then I just use scissors and freehand cut the end there. You could use your paper um, trimmer if you don't like eyeballing it. But I did that and then I just cut a notch in the middle and then cut two angled ones to meet up there in the middle to make it a little flag. Really quick and easy. And then just holding it against um, the main image there, I flipped it over and again just used my scissors and eyeballed it to get a straight cut. But you, again, you could use your paper trimmer if you're not comfortable with eyeballing things. And then a little bit of foam tape to pop that up so it's got a little bit of dimension. And then more foam tape on the back of the main image here so that it's popped up a little bit off the card. And then I grabbed some Doodlebug, the lilac sprinkles there to play off the purple. So I just adhered a few of those, the different shades of purple, super fun. So once I was done with those, I am going to go on and do the inside of the card. And for this, I just took um, my MFT uh, lemon drop ink and just inked up the stamp and stamped it along the bottom there. And then made sure to wipe up the little bit that got on my craft sheet there and dried it so I don't get, you know, a bunch of smeared ink on the back of the card because that just looks messy. So got that cleaned up and then I chose the little companion sentiment to that thanks so much stamp. And inked it up again with the Hero Arts Black ink and then lined it up with my stamp positioner and I'm going to get that on the inside of the card. And that's all there is to it. So as always, I will post a link below the video to my blog post where I'll have like the pictures and the info and all that kind of stuff and there will also be a link to all of the supplies used as well as they'll be linked below the video as well so um, thank you guys so much for watching and make sure to check out my other videos if you haven't already and I will see you guys next time bye